Several months ago, I interviewed Tim Johnson, who's uh, an executive with Lifecycle out of Mississauga, Ontario, about a really unique uh, battery, lithium ion battery recycling process that that company, company has got. Since then, the company has announced that it's going to go public on the New York Stock Exchange and raise approximately $615 million to fund a global expansion. So this is a very exciting story for a Canadian startup. We're going to talk to uh, Canel uh, Falfer, uh, who is the Chief Commercial Officer of Lifecycle, about that. So welcome to the interview, Canel. Thanks, Mark, and thanks for inviting me here. So uh, why did you decide to go public? And, uh, and I mean, that's a significant raise. Uh, so kudos to you folks. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, I mean, I, I think before the transaction occurred, we had already announced the build out of our hub in Rochester. Um, there's, there's media out there of approximate capital cost of $175 million. Um, so in order to build that and fulfill that part of our business plan, uh, we had to look at different options for financing it. And, and given um, the opportunity that presented itself in terms of being able to, to go public through a, a special purpose acquisition vehicle, uh, we decided to uh, engage in that route um, to raise the necessary capital for, for the next phase of our growth. Sure. Well, let's talk about the next phase of that growth. I mean, the, it looks like uh, you have something unique, and there's certainly a lot of concern about you know, what happens to batteries at the end of their life cycle you know, with the expansion of the electric vehicle market. And so uh, what, uh, give us an overview of what your expansion plans are. For sure. And uh, I mean, as you mentioned, Mark, we're a Canadian company. We built our first facility here natural extension is to move into the US and, and cover North America. But when we look at global demand for lithium ion batteries, global production, which produces uh, waste streams that can be recycled, uh, the use of our technology is, is applicable not only here, but in other regions of the world. And you could argue also that the opportunity in other regions like Europe and Asia, even at this moment is, is greater. So uh, we wanted to, and, and I mean, from our, our mission and vision statements from the beginning, you know, in 2016 was that we wanted to work towards being a global company. We've figured out a way uh, to, to process batteries, manufacturing scrap at a high efficiency and economic way. Uh, so we want to capture that opportunity. And we're not going to be the only ones doing that. Uh, but I think the, we're just at the early stages of this market. So the opportunity is ripe for global expansion penetrating new markets and uh, uh, building a, a great company around this business. So one of the things that I find interesting about your process is that you recycle 95% of the materials in a, in a battery. And given the concern around the availability of, and some of the, the mining practices of some of the, you know, the critical materials, the critical um, uh, rare earth minerals and even some of the geopolitical strategy around, you know, where those minerals are, are located, that I think really ideally positions your company uh, going forward. Yeah, exactly right, Mark. There's, there's a lot of concerns about where do the materials come from? Uh, how do you get the materials? And also, as you said, security of supply. Um, but, you know, overarching that, you see that you know, sustainability is a key part of electrification strategy. Uh, and there have been, you know, counter arguments to are EVs really sustainable? What is the impact of producing the EVs? Well, a lot of those studies show in the total life cycle cost uh, or environmental cost, they're better than an internal combustion engine. Uh, from the manufacturing of the vehicle, there may be a, uh, you know, a lot of the studies shows the higher CO2 footprint. A lot of that is due to the, the battery production linked to the raw material production. So that's where our process fits in. How do we help to bring down the CO2 footprint uh, of battery production, which in turn helps bring down the CO2 footprint um, of the vehicle. But at the same time, once you've already brought those materials out of the ground, you could, you could still, they're still valuable materials and you can continue to reuse them. Now, the electric, uh, electrification of transportation is an exciting market for you, but you've got to be very uh, encouraged by the uh, adoption, the rapid adoption by the utility sector 
for power grid, uh, you know, batteries in, in, in that particular market. And there you get into different kinds of batteries, like flow batteries that have vanadium or zinc or will your process work with those types of batteries as well? No. So we're only focused on lithium ion batteries, which is still the dominant uh, technology, I would say, in energy storage. Uh, there are other technologies, as you say, vanadium flow, et cetera, that have been uh, tried or, or continue to scale up. And part of their market penetration is because of the supply crunch on lithium ion batteries, where a lot of the lithium ion cell manufacturers want to focus, especially the large ones on the automotive sector. So on the energy storage side, they look for different solutions uh, that may be able to give you the same performance or, or uh, economic performance as well uh, to serve that market. And this will be the final question, uh, Kunal. It, one, another uh, positive aspect of your process is it's environmentally friendly. So there's no uh, uh, releases, there's uh, no chemicals uh, that are discharged, that sort of thing. Yep, exactly. So that's an important part uh, you know, you're trying to provide a sustainable recycling solution. As I mentioned, the, that's an overarching theme uh, when you're working in electrification. Uh, but having the ability to not, for example, in our front end processing on the spoke, no, no water discharge uh, and, and no solid waste helps us to deploy the facilities very easily and quickly and rapidly in different markets uh, because you can easily meet any environmental requirements in, in stringent jurisdictions. I guess that's a big issue because I, I hear that from other industries where uh, permitting and regulations is actually a, a real drag on development and expansion. Yeah, and I think even in, in battery production, cathode production, cell production, that it's a, uh, an element of that that is, is, it makes it difficult to site sometimes those facilities. Um, so to be able to choose geographies and, and be close to where the batteries or coming out of the market is very important and having that flexibility and not having permitting as a roadblock uh, is fundamental and helpful for our global expansion. Kunal, thank you very much. Good luck on your expansion. Great. Thanks, Markham. Thanks for having me.